All right, everybody, let's get started with spiking. So before we get started, we're gonna do a couple of housekeeping things. First, I want you to disable your Windows Defender real-time protection if you have that enabled. So it looks something like this where you should turn off this button right here. We're doing that because Voln Server will actually be blocked by Windows Defender if you try to run it and then run anything malicious against it. So good on Windows Defender for picking this up. This is more recent as I've taught this in the past and never used to, but now it does. So we're gonna make sure that we turn off this real-time protection. And then we're gonna make sure that when we run our programs today, our immunity debugger, and we run our Voln server, that we're running them as administrator. So let's go ahead and first get our Voln server running. So remember I told you to extract that to a folder. Here's my Voln server folder. I'm gonna right click on this and I'm just gonna run it as administrator. So now that I've got that running, it should look something like this. And we're also going to run immunity as administrator. So we're gonna do that because if we don't, it's actually not going to see Voln server running as administrator and be able to access it. So we need both running as admin and the other reason is for Voln server running as admin is when we get the shell on this, we're actually gonna end up as root automatically. So we just want this in the most simple terms. So I'm gonna bring immunity over here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to file and we're gonna say attach. And if you scroll down, you'll see Voln server right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit attach on that. Okay, in the bottom right corner, you see that it says pause. What we're gonna do is just hit start over here, this play button up top, and now it should say running. So if you're running, then we are good to go. So now we're gonna dive into our Kali Linux machine. So I'm in a command prompt in Kali Linux, and the first thing I want to do is connect to Voln server and see what it is. So by default, Voln server runs on port 9999, and you need to know the IP address of your Windows machine that it's running on. So once you know that, what we can do is use a tool called Netcat. We'll use a switch of NV. We're gonna do a connection here, and we're just going to say the IP address. So mine is 1.90, and then the port that you're gonna connect on, which is 9999. Okay, so you should see this screen that says, welcome to vulnerable server. Type help for help. So it's saying help in all caps. We're gonna do that, all caps. And then we get this list of valid commands. So it looks like Voln server takes commands based on what you enter, right? So there's a stats command, R time, L time, etc. So the primary command that we're gonna be focusing on is this trun command. Now, when I've taught this in the past, I've left out actually how to find this. So I wanted to teach in depth how we're gonna find that trun itself is vulnerable. So we're gonna do something called spiking. What spiking does is we're going to take this command one at a time, we'll say like stats. And we're gonna say, hey, stats, I'm gonna throw a bunch of characters at you and see if I can overflow that buffer that we talked about in the previous video. So do we overflow the buffer? Does the program crash? If it does, then we know, hey, stats is vulnerable. If it doesn't, okay, maybe it's not vulnerable, we'll move on to the next one. So I'm gonna show you what a non-vulnerable one looks like and what a vulnerable one looks like, and we're gonna look at stats and trun for that purpose. So when we spike, we're gonna use a tool called generic TCP, um, and it's going to look something like this. Let's go ahead and control C, or actually we'll just type exit out of this if we can. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to use, it's called generic send TCP. Let's type that in real quick. Okay, so here is the usage for this. You're gonna need the host. Okay, we know the host of 192.168.1.90. You're gonna need the port, we know that. You're gonna need a spike script. And then you're gonna need these skip variables here, which we're just gonna leave at zero. So this is what the usage should look like but we need this spike script. So let's go ahead and talk about that first. So I've already gone ahead and pre-written it. It's very, very simple. So let's take a look at it in gedit. So first we're gonna look at stats. So we're gonna have stats.spk for spike. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to read the line. Then we're going to take a string, and the string is stats. Remember, that's what we had here, the stats command. And then we're just going to send a variable at it. Okay, and then when we spike this, we're going to send variables in all different forms and iterations. So it might send a um, 1,000 at a time, then 20,000 at a time, then 5 at a time. It's just looking for something to break the program. So that's what spiking is. We're going to send all kinds of different characters um, randomly, essentially, to try to break this part of the program. So now we're getting into specifics here. So if you can imagine, we've got the stats.spike. We're also going to have the trun.spike, and the trun is going to have this trun command here. So if you're following along, make sure that you type this out just how I have it, just these three simple lines. Go ahead and save it as stats.spike. And what we're going to do is we're going to send this. So again, we're going to say generic send TCP. And then we know the host is 192.168.1.90. The port is 9999. The spike script is stats.spike. And then we're going to just say zero space zero. Now we've got immunity running right now over here. If you have multiple screens, you can run it on multiple and kind of watch what happens. If we hit enter here, it's going to just be running through this. This is running. You can see that it's taking commands but nothing's really happening. We'll let it run through all the way just to make sure. And so you're gonna see a little bit of a different action when we do have something vulnerable. So we're going through, looks like we're connecting. If we look at Voln server, you can see that we're actually connecting to the client here and then disconnecting from the client as we send these commands over. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kill this for now. You can hit Control C doesn't look like it's vulnerable. In a real test, we'd let it run all the way through, but I'm telling you now it's not vulnerable, so we'll just save a little bit of time. So now let's take a look at the Trun spiking. Again, should look the same, but you should have a Trun.spike similar to this, so if you want to go ahead and type this out. And we have this Trun command here. So when we send this spike, I'm just going to tab up twice and change this to Trun. And then again, we have to make sure immunity is running. You see it's running in the corner. We're going to go ahead and hit send on this. And immediately immunity starts blinking. What happened? We have paused over here. There's an access violation when executing. OK, let's go ahead and just kill the process in Kali because we don't need to keep sending all these. So your Voln server has actually crashed. You're not seeing an error message because it's being held up by the, the immunity debugger, if we were to actually detach or unpause this, then Voln server would crash. So we've hit a violation. This is really good. This says, hey, something's vulnerable here. And if we look at the registers, we can kind of get some information. So one of the informations that we're picking out is, OK, we're seeing this trun command sent, right? And we're sending this trun command with a bunch of A's. So imagine this going into a buffer space, right, like we talked about before. Okay, we're sending this command, A, 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 A. In a perfect world, the trunk command, or this, this should all fill into a buffer space, right? All these A's. Well, what's happened here is that it's actually filled over. So if we look at the EBP, remember the base register, right? You see 41414141. That's just hex code for four A's. So we've got these here, these four bytes, right? And we've gone actually over the ESP as well. A bunch of A's here. Okay. And we've gone over the EIP. So now we've overridden everything. Remember when we talked about in the last video, the EIP is the important factor. If we can control this EIP, we can get malicious and point it to something malicious, right? So that's what we're going to do in the next couple of videos. So I've showed you how... Trun itself can be spiked and found. In the next video, what we're going to actually be covering is how to fuzz the Trun command with the Python script. So that way you can kind of feel out how this process is done in another way called fuzzing. So it's going to be very, very similar where we send a bunch of A's 
and it might feel like a little bit of a repeat lesson, but we're gonna build out a Python script to do that. And then once we do that, we're gonna work on finding this EIP location, because once we control that, again, we can inject malicious code. So step one done, I will see you in the next video for fuzzing.